So Christine and Ron Ling, you want to come forward, please? So every three years, NHGRI is required to put together a report uh, documenting and, and characterizing the populations and individuals that have been recruited to participate in the research projects that are both funded by the extramural research program, but also including the intramural investigators' work as well. In the past, this uh, report was done every two years. It's now the triennial report, and it's actually required of all the uh, institutes of NIH. So Rong Ling and uh, Christine Chang put this report together, but Christine will give the presentation. Can you guys hear me well? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so uh, this triennial council report, I am presenting on behalf of the NHGRI inclusion team, which includes myself and Rong Ling Li in extramural, and Sarah Hall in intramural. So I'm going to start with a background of inclusion reporting requirements and why inclusion is um, important and done. Then I'll provide a couple of important definitions. Um, then we'll take a look at the data and wrap up with a summary of where NHGRI is in, in inclusion and future. So as background, NIH is mandated by the Public Health Service Act to ensure inclusion of women and minority groups that is appropriate to the scientific question under study. NIH has done this since 1994, and HIC, as Rudy mentioned, uh, released biannual reports that are publicly available uh, at NIH report at the link shown there. But because of changes related to the 21st Century Cures Act, this is now being done triannually. So the two definitions I want to point out is that um, inclusion is only done on clinical research, and that is defined as research that is patient-oriented, meaning it's conducted with human subjects or with materials of human origin for which an investigator or his or her colleague directly interacts with human subjects. It also includes epidemiological and behavioral studies and outcomes in health services research. And then minority groups are defined here as all races except white and unknown race plus Hispanic ethnicity. And then lastly, uh, sex gender is used interchangeably here. So there are some studies that refer to biological sex and some studies such as surveys that refer to gender identity. So I'm sure you've all seen this um, in your grant application reports. This is the Inclusion Enrollment Report, or IER. And this is used to collect um, planned enrollment data as well as cumulative or actual data. And you see going um, down on the left here are the racial categories and across the ethnic categories, which are further subdivided by sex, gender, and unknown, not, um, not reported in each category. So now we're going to look at the data for FY16 uh, through FY18. And you'll notice here that um, 2016 is listed twice, the second time with an asterisk to indicate um, that uh, a study that had over 1.2 million participants is excluded here. Um, and the reason is for that we're excluding is that the increased number of enrolled participants that year um, skews the data. So we analyze the data with and without that study. Um, and then you can see on average in extramural, the number of enrolled participants per study is larger than the average number of enrolled participants in intramural studies. Uh, another thing I want to point out is that the data shown here, the IERs, are only for prospective data. So IERs with existing data are excluded, with the exception of FY16 and FY17 intramural data. And that has to do with um, the capabilities of the IT tracking system then. It didn't have the flag um, to indicate uh, existing data. So therefore, this decrease that you see here from 109 to 9 IERs in intramural is really related to um, a change in the system that allowed us to correctly identify studies that used uh, existing data, as well as excluding studies that were no longer active. Um, in this last uh, fiscal year, 2018, NHGRI had a change in and centralization of the intramural IT system to manage protocols that will greatly improve the quality and consistency of our in, uh, inclusion data. So looking at uh, the data by sex gender, we can see that uh, in general, there was pretty even balance between sex gender uh, categories proportions uh, in the past three years with a slight decrease in the uh, proportion of unknown sex gender. 
And then looking at the data by minorities, which again are defined as all races except white uh, and unknown plus Hispanic ethnicity. Um, you can see that after excluding that one uh, outlier study, uh, the proportion of minorities increase. And uh, that has to do with that particular study having a low proportion of minority enrollment as well as a high proportion, proportion of unknown race. Uh, and between uh, 2016 and 2018, minority enrollment made up between 25 to 35% of participants. And um, there is a little bit of a dip between 2016 and 2017, and I'll go into that in the next slide. So now we're going to dive into the data and look at by race, which are American Indian, Alaska Native, Asian, Black African American, Native Hawaiian, Pacific Islander, white, more than one race or unknown, not reported. And as you can see, some categories like the uh, American Indian, Alaska Native and white and the Native Hawaiian, Pacific Islander uh, categories in yellow are very small. Um, one thing I wanted to point out was that, again, you can see after you exclude that outlier study, the proportion of black African-American uh, enrollment increased. Um, but then you compare it to subsequent years, and it looks like it decreased um, going from FY16 to FY18. And that has to do with um, the conclusion of H3 Africa grants in 2016. So looking by ethnicity, we see that um, the Hispanic Latino proportion has remained pretty low and steady during this reporting period. And then um, now these next few slides, we're going to look at data from uh, more than just a few years, uh, the past two biannual reports, so the report for 2011 to 2012 and the report for 2013 to the 2014. We're also going to provide um, a reference to the US Census uh, 2018 population estimate, um, which we provide. But I want to caution people that the, um, the role of the NIH inclusion policy isn't to try to match the census proportions, but rather to support research that supports, um, that, that answers scientific questions appropriate for the study population uh, and ultimately to the US population. So going back to the data, we can see that over time, the sex gender uh, proportion has evened out. And now looking at major ra racial categories, um, so white, black African American, Asian, unknown, not reported, uh, we see that over time, the black um, and African American proportion has increased, while the proportion of um, Asians has decreased. And then looking at the data by, by ethnic categories, we see that the proportion of Hispanic Latino enrollment was highest in the 2000 to 2014 reporting period and lowest in the most recent one at just 3.5%. And that in comparison to the previous slide, um, the proportion of Hispanic um, Latino enrollment is much smaller than the US Census estimate. So in summary, um, in comparison to the past two reporting periods, the proportion of black African-American enrollment has increased, while Asian and Hispanic Latino enrollment has decreased. However, uh, programs such as H3 Africa, uh, CSER, the Clinical Sequencing ev Evidence Generating Research Program, and the IGNITE, or Implementing Genomics and uh, Practice Program, focus on increasing minority enrollment through different ways. Um, so H3 Africa does this through large-scale population studies on the African population by African researchers. And then CSER and IGNITE requested in their most recent iterations uh, enhanced diversity applications. And then there are other efforts at NHGRI to uh, increase diversity, and that includes the diversity supplements and then the diversity action plans in training, which will increase the uh, diversity in the biomedical and genomics research workforce. And then lastly, uh, because of the change in the intramural uh, IT system in FY18, um, going forward, we feel that this will improve the quality uh, of the data and our efforts to monitor inclusion in the future. Thank you. And Rongling and I are happy to take questions or comments. Uh, 
Um, I, I assume that the changes in the definition of the clinical trial haven't yet affected your the data you presented, right? Okay. And and any rumors that that somehow the CDC or other major organizations were going to change the definitions of the kinds of categories or that OMB would change them, that, and that's just rumors unsubstantiated, right? I haven't heard of anything. <laughs> so I'm not sure that it matters, right? I mean, this is every participant that's been recruited for any study, whether it's classified as a clinical trial or not, I don't or think Maybe it's I misunderstood. I thought that, that she said that that this did was for clinical trials. No, so actually clinical research and clinical trials are um, different. Yeah, clinical research. It's not a double order for clinical trials. So this would exclude oh. clinical okay. trials? Yeah. No, it would yeah. include. It would include them, but you, you, you're just putting a, a different label on it. It's all going to end up in this report. Uh, okay. No, it, it's not a different label. This is bigger than clinical trials. Yeah. This includes yeah. outcomes. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Okay. I, I do think the Asian decreasing is interesting um, and important that for, for grants that are talking about underrepresented groups, I believe Asians are not necessarily always included. Mm -hmm. And so there may be some influence on that. I know I noticed for the eMERGE, Asians were included. Mm -hmm. um, that may have some influence on where people are putting their recruitment efforts. Yeah, that's a good point. Karen, actually, the OMB um, cat categories, and Asians are not included in it. I thought you had Asians on your slide today. I think it was Hawaiian Pacific Island. No, I looked, was actually, because okay, I was going I'll to ask look. the question, and oh, then okay. I saw it there. Yeah, okay. So, so I, I do think that's an issue where they're being underrepresented in genomics research <laughs> because they're not on that definition. So. The point is they're not being actively recruited because well, they're not considered underrepresented minorities. Right. Well, so, for example, in the Caesar, you know, where you have to hit a certain proportion, you could not include Asians. And so I, I think we're going to continue to underrepresent them if people can't make a concerted effort to enroll them. Yeah, that's a good point. I agree with you. Jeff? Yeah, I guess I'm wondering about the decision to include uh, foreign nationals in the recruitment data, and specifically the H3 Africa population. That seems to me to sort of skew the numbers if what we're looking for is some reasonable representativeness of the U.S. Uh, population. It, yeah, Jeff, I think it's a good point. <clears throat> this data reported generated results. They also separated the U.S. only and, the uh, and the, uh, all of them in include the international uh, samples. Yeah. We have separate results there. Dr. Reese? If I could follow up on the question Jeff just asked, were you able to distinguish between the Africans, foreign, foreign national Africans versus the African Americans, since you already have that data, mm -hmm. is, is there any distinction that you've been able to identify trends, interesting findings? I do agree it's, it's, it's kind of unusual to put that together, but since you already have it, have you determined anything? Yeah, we can <clears throat> we can write under the write analyze that in exclude Africa the H three Africa participants from Africa and the CDS chain. The most likely that in, uh, the in fact in two thousand sixteen that's most of them um, by Africa from Africa Africa uh, Africa from Africa. So we can exclude that and see what are the results. Basically, we, we have that in, um, data. Thank you. OK, if there are no other questions, then I neglected to tell you that we need to vote for this, because this is a report that council is um, blessing or accepting or approving of. So can I get a notion, to, can I get a motion, rather, to approve the report? Accept the report. Okay. A second. All in favor? Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Thank right. you very much. Thank you. Christine Rowling, thank you.